In this lesson, we want to review applications of linear equations and look at some simple interest problems. So again, when we're solving applications of linear equation problems, we can use this little six step procedure to help us out. So for solving a word problem, we have that we want to read the problem and determine the question or again questions to be answered. We want to assign a variable to represent the unknown. And then with these type of problems, you're gonna be able to express other unknowns in terms of this variable. Then we're going to write an equation. We're gonna solve the equation. We're going to write the answer in terms of the question or questions asked. And then we're gonna check the answer using the words of the problem. So this part right here, the last part, just make sure your answer is reasonable. All right, so for today's problems, we're gonna be using the simple interest formula. So the simple interest formula goes like this. We have I, which is the amount of simple interest earned, is equal to P, which is the principal or amount invested, times R, which is the rate as a decimal, times T, which is the time, which is generally given to us in years, but it could be months, it could be weeks, it could be whatever they give to you, okay? But generally it's gonna be years. Now, one thing we need to understand before we move on is kind of the difference between simple interest and compound interest. We will look at examples that deal with compound interest later on in the course. We need to kind of build some concepts before we deal with that. But right now we'll be dealing with just simple interest. So with simple interest, I only earn interest on the principal or the original amount invested. With compound interest, I earn interest on interest. So let's look at a very simple example. Let's say that my original amount that I invest is $1,000. Okay, so this is my account balance with each of these, okay? So one is a savings account with simple interest, one's a savings account with compound interest, and let's say each of them pays me 10%. Okay, so it's 10% in each case, so no difference. At the end of year one, let's just assume they hold the money for a year, and at the end of the year, they give us our interest payment. So at the end of year one, then this guy right here, 10% of 1,000 is 100, so my balance is $1,100. Same thing when it's compounding. I didn't get any interest dropped in there yet, so it's still $1,100. Now, at the end of year two, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a difference, right? Because this guy, I just get paid on the original amount that I invested, which is 1,000. So I get my 10% again, which is just $100. So this guy's gonna go to 1,200, okay? So that's where it is with simple interest. With compound interest, they're now gonna say, okay, you get 10% of the balance. So the balance is $1,100. So I'm gonna get 10% of that, which is $110. So I'm gonna get $1,210 as a balance, okay? So the difference here is that I have 1,200 from simple interest or $1,210 with compound interest because my interest that was earned, which was $100 at that point, earned interest of 10%, okay, $100, 10% of that is 10 bucks. So that's where you're gonna get the difference in the account balance, okay? So simple interest, you only earn interest on the original amount invested. Compound interest, you earn interest on the full balance, or you could say you earn interest on your interest. All right, so let's look at a simple example here just to kind of get our feet wet. And then we'll look at two kind of typical problems that you'd see. So Nathan invests $10,000 in a savings account, which pays 3% annual simple interest. What is the total amount of simple interest earned at the end of a two year period? So again, for this guy right here, you can almost do this mentally. You can say what? This is I simple interest earned equals P, which is the principal times R the rate as a decimal times T the time in this case in years. Mentally, I can say, okay, $10,000 times 3% as a decimal is 0 0.03. So if you do that, 10,000 times 0 0.03 is 300. And so it's basically $300 a year for two years. 300 times two is 600. So he would earn $600 for the two year period. But to plug it into the formula, to kind of make it official, you would substitute in a 10,000 for P because that's your principal or amount invested. You would substitute in a 0 0.03 for your rate. Okay, it's always as a decimal. And you would substitute in a two for the time period. In this case, that stands for two years, okay? So again, make sure that the rate is in terms of years if you're dealing with years, okay? So we have 10,000 times 0 0.03, which is 300, times two, which is 600. So you can say that your I, or your simple interest earned, is 600. And again, we can answer this. Let me just erase everything. We have our answer now. We'll make a nice little sentence and say that Nathan earned 
$600 at the end of two years. Okay, and lots of different sentences that you can construct to answer this. You're just looking for something that addresses what they asked. Okay, so it says, what is the total amount of simple interest earned at the end of a two-year period? And we just said Nathan earned $600 at the end of two years. Perfectly acceptable. Okay, let's look at a typical problem now. One where we have to set up kind of our full array of steps. So Jason has $70,000 to invest and wants to earn an overall rate of 9% annual simple interest. So he has $70,000 to invest and he wants to earn an overall rate of 9% annual simple interest, okay? Let's go down and look at the next part. So he wants to invest part of the money in a savings account, which pays 8% annual simple interest. The rest of the money will be placed in a corporate bond fund, which pays 12% annual simple interest. Then here's the question, to meet his investment goal, which again was up here, he has $70,000 to invest and wants to earn an overall rate of 9% annual simple interest. That's the investment goal. So to meet his investment goal, how much should be invested at each rate? So to earn 9% on $70,000, how much should he put in the savings account and how much should he put in the corporate bond fund? All right. So we've read the problem. We understand what we need to do. Let's let a variable like X be equal to the amount he invests in one of these guys. Doesn't matter which one you choose. You can say X is the amount he invests in the savings account, or you can say X is the amount he invests in the corporate bond fund. It makes no difference. So I'm going to come down here and say, we're going to let X be equal to the amount invested in the bond fund. Let me put the in the bond fund. Okay. So then what can we say about the amount invested in the savings account? Well, we're told that Jason has a total of $70,000 to invest and he only puts it in either the savings account or the bond fund. So if X is representing the amount that's put in the bond fund, then 70,000 minus X has to be the amount that he put in the savings account. So 70,000, which is the total amount, minus X, which is the amount invested in the bond fund, is gonna be equal to the amount invested in the savings account. Okay, nice and simple. Let me make that better. Okay, so now that we have kind of our variable set up and the other unknown is expressed in terms of that variable, we're gonna move into our next step, which is to basically set up an equation. To do that, I'm gonna make a little table. A lot of times I think it's a little bit helpful if you're unfamiliar with solving word problems to set up a table. Some people don't do it, they feel like it's a waste of time, but it can be helpful, so let's just go ahead and do it. So we're gonna write our simple interest formula up here on the top. So I, the simple interest earned, is equal to P, the principal or amount invested, times R, the rate is a decimal, times T, the time. Then for this guy right here, this is gonna be the investments. So I'll just put I and V for investments. So you have the savings account, and you have the corporate bond fund. So I'll just kind of initial those. So we know that for the amount invested or the principal, the bond fund we said was X. So let's put an X here. For the savings account, we said it was 70,000 minus X. Now the rate is given to us in the problem. It says the savings account pays 8% annual simple interest. And it says the corporate bond fund pays 12% annual simple interest. So the savings account again is 8% or 0 0.08 as a decimal. The bond fund is 12% or 0 0.12 as a decimal. Now what about the time? Well, basically we're dealing with a scenario where the time is just gonna be one. So if we go back up, you can see that it basically says in the first part of the problem, Jason has $70,000 to invest and wants to earn an overall rate of 9% annual, which is yearly, simple interest. So what are we doing for one year, right? One year period. So we can go back down and just put a one for each time period. 
you can basically get rid of it because multiplying by one just leaves something unchanged, right? But we'll just leave it there for kind of completeness. So we know that I, the simple interest earned, is the product of the principal times the rate times the time. So at the bottom, it's pretty easy. I would just have 0.12x. For this guy right here, it's kind of hard to fit this, but we're gonna have 0 0.08 times the quantity 70,000 minus X. So let me kind of scooch this part up so it's out of the way. So I'm gonna put 70,000 minus X. I'm just gonna bleed into the next column. I can extend the column, but it's gonna kind of make everything go crazy. So let's just leave it like that. And we can now kind of think about how we can use this information. So I have the simple interest earned from the savings account, which is 0 0.08 times the quantity 70,000 minus X. And then I have the simple interest earned from the corporate bond fund, which is 0.12X. So if I sum these amounts together, this needs to be equal to what? Well, again, it tells us that he has $70,000 to invest and he wants to earn an overall rate of return of 9%. So the sum of the simple interest from those two investments has got to be equal to 70,000, which is the principal, times the rate, which is 0 0.09, times the time, which is one. Okay, so you can just leave that off. So let's go through, we've set up our equation now, and let's just solve this guy. So 0 0.08 times 70,000 is 5,600, then minus, you'd have 0 0.08 times x, then plus 0.12x, and this equals 70,000 times 0 0.09 is 6,300. So 6,300. So negative 0.08x plus 0.12x is going to be 0.04x. So you'd have 5,600 plus 0.04x is equal to 6,300. Then I can subtract 5,600 away from each side of the equation. That'll cancel. If I have 0.04x is equal to 6,300 minus 5,600 is 700, okay? So the last step here to get x by itself is to divide both sides by 0.04. I'll get x is equal to 17,500. Okay, so let's take this back up. So this is where you really need to, again, think about a sentence you can write because you don't just put x equals 17,500 and turn in the test, okay? You've gotta make sense of it in terms of the problem. So x was the amount invested in the bond fund. So we know that's $17,500. Then 70,000 minus x, so 70,000 minus 17,500, or 52,500 is the amount invested in the savings account. So this is 52,500. So now we're ready to go back up and answer this in terms of the question being asked. How much should be invested at each rate? Well, we can say that Jason should invest $52,500 in the savings account. And $17,500 in the bond fund. So Jason should invest $52,500 in the savings account and $17,500 in the bond fund. Okay, so how can we check this to make sure that it's accurate? Well, again, if we go back to the beginning of the problem, Jason has $70,000 to invest. So let's check that first. Is the amount that he put in the bond fund plus the amount that he put in the savings account equal to $70,000? $52,500 plus $17,500 does equal $70,000. So that part is a check. So this is good to go. Now he wants to earn an overall rate of return of 9% annual simple interest. So 70,000 earning 9% annual simple interest would mean that he's earning $6,300 a year in annual simple interest. Okay, so let's check that against what he's gonna earn with the two investments. So he's gonna earn 8% with the savings account and he's gonna earn 12% with the corporate bond fund. So let's go back up. We, again, we have 6,300 as the amount that he's earning, and we're gonna check. So we have 52,500 in the savings account, which is earning 8%. So that would give me $4,200 a year. And then he put 17,500 in the bond fund, which is earning 12%. So that would give him $2,100, okay? So if you sum these two amounts together, the 4,200 he gets from the savings account 
and the $2,100 he gets from the bond fund, he's going to get the $6,300 he's looking for in annual simple interest. So we can say this problem does check out. And again, Jason should invest $52,500 in the savings account and $17,500 in the bond fund. All right, let's take a look at one more of these. So Jennifer recently retired and needs $6,000 per year in supplemental income from investments. So she has $50,000 that will be invested in both junk bonds, which pays 15% annual simple interest, and commercial paper, which pays 7% annual simple interest. How much money should be invested in each? So again, let's go back up. Again, she retired and needs $6,000, $6,000 per year in supplemental income. So she needs $6,000. She has $50,000, so that's going to be her principal. And that will be invested in, again, both junk bonds. The junk bonds are going to pay 15% annual simple interest, and the commercial paper is going to pay 7% annual simple interest. So how much money should be invested in each? Okay, that's what we're trying to answer. So let's let a variable like X be the amount that she invests in, let's just say, the commercial paper. You can put it as either, but I'm just going to go with the commercial paper. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So let's let X be equal to the amount invested in commercial and let me just abbreviate that because it's kind of hard to write all that so I'm just going to put commercial paper C period P period so then what can we say about the amount that's put into junk bonds well again the total amount she's investing is 50,000 so we can say then 50,000 minus X is going to be the amount invested in junk bonds. So I'll put J period, B period, okay, for junk bonds. So let's take this information to a table, just like we did in the last example. So for our investments, these are gonna go down. You have your junk bonds and you have your commercial paper, okay? And again, we have our simple interest formula. I, the simple interest earned, is equal to P, the principal, times R, the rate, times T, the time, okay? Now, in this case, we're talking about an annual basis. So time is just going to be one for each of these. Okay, so very, very simple. For the rate, we know that for the junk bonds, they pay 15%, so 0.15. We know for the commercial paper, it pays 7%, so 0.07. Again, you've always got to express the rate as a decimal. And then the principal, or the amount invested in each of these, we just modeled that. We said X is the amount invested in the commercial paper and 50,000 minus X is the amount invested in the junk bonds. So the principal, or again, the amount invested in the commercial paper is X and the amount invested in the junk bonds is gonna be 50,000 minus X. Okay, so my simple interest earned, again, all I've gotta do is multiply in the rows. So I would have principal of 50,000 minus X times a rate of 0.15 times one, which really doesn't change anything. So you basically have 0.15 times the quantity, 50,000 minus X. Again, hard to kind of fit that in the column. And then over here, it's pretty easy for the commercial paper. It's just gonna be 0.07 times X. Again, you can multiply by one, but it doesn't really change anything. Now, we are told that she wants to earn $6,000 per year in supplemental income from investments. Okay, so what do we know? We know that the interest she's gonna earn from the junk bonds is 0.15 times the quantity 50,000 minus X. Then if we add that to the interest she's gonna earn from the commercial paper, which is 0.07 X, this has to be equal to 6,000, okay? Because that's what she needs to earn. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. Very, very easy. 0.15 times 50,000 is 7,500. And then minus 0.15 times x is 0.15x. Then plus 0.07x, again, is equal to 6,000. If we combine like terms here, you'd end up with negative 0.08x. So 7,500 minus 0.08x is equal to 6,000. I'm going to subtract 7,500 away from each side of the equation. That's going to cancel. Let me get some room going. So on the left, I'm just going to have my negative 0.08x. On the right, I'm going to have negative 1,500. We'll finish this up by dividing both sides of the equation by negative 0.08. So 
So this is gonna cancel with this, and I'll have that X is equal to 18,750. So 18,750, okay? So that's our answer for X. But again, we're not done. We've gotta make sense of that. So again, X was the amount invested in commercial paper. So we know that's $18,750. And then we said that 50,000 minus X, which is $31,250, is gonna be the amount invested in the junk bonds. So 31,250. Okay, so let's go back up and make a nice little clean sentence. So Jennifer should invest $31,250 in junk bonds, junk bonds, I'll just abbreviate it, and $18,750 in commercial paper. So you can check this pretty easily by going back to the original statement where it said, Jennifer recently retired and needs $6,000 per year. Okay, so that's what she has to earn. So just check the simple interest from the two investments. Again, from the junk bonds, she's got $31,250 invested and she's getting 15% on that. So times 0.15, that's gonna give you what? That's gonna give you $4,687.50. Okay, so this is what she earns from the junk bonds. I'm just gonna put junk bonds. Okay, this is what she earns in yearly simple interest. Then from the commercial paper, she's gonna earn 7% on 18,750. So if I had 18,750 times 0 0.07, I would get $1,312.50. So $1,312.50. So all you have to do to check this problem is sum these two amounts together. Does it give you 6,000? The answer to that is yes, right? If I add $4,687.50 to $1,312.50, I will get $6,000. So that does tell me my solution is correct, that Jennifer should invest $31,250 in the junk bonds and $18,750 in the commercial paper.